It all started... Oh, we're getting vulnerable in this one, huh? Let's talk about depression and how I use mysticism to cure it. Obvious disclaimer, this is not psychological or psychiatric advice. You can get that from your clinician or your doctor. So let's get into it. It's probably not a surprise to you that I'm a little neurospicy. When I was a kid, I had these like bouts of depression, despondency, lack of motivation. My depression was exacerbated by the US school system, which let's be honest, needs an update as bad as all of my Apple products. I mean, seriously, those Apple products are always asking for a freaking update. Like, why can't they just enjoy the last update for a bit? So after high school where, I mean, let's be honest, I guess everyone's depressed in high school, but I started to work on myself through college, through dance and art and finding the right people. And honestly, through medication as well. I had tried prescription drugs and then like the cool psychonaut that I thought I was, I tried a lot of non-prescription drugs as well. It wasn't until my third or so chapter with recreational drug use that I had a really serious choice to make. To spare you the details, I'll just say that it wasn't working out. I eventually had an ego death where I lost my mind. I found my mind and then I had some mystical experiences. It was around this time that my Jedi master told me that I could either continue on the path of recreational drug usage or start the path of serious healing work and working with her. I chose the latter, luckily, because it transformed my world. Now keep in mind, I had been studying tarot and Western esoterica and um, Eastern spirituality for a lot of my life at this point but the ego death, the mystical experiences, and my Jedi master all together really accelerated the process and brought me to where I am today. I went from hopeless romantic, pseudo-spiritual, depressed, image-loving, substance-abusing, queer raver of toxic positivity to just as queer, actually spiritual, self-loving, successful entrepreneur. And now I get to help people from all over the world. I made this transformation in less than a year and I'm gonna tell you how I did it. Please keep in mind that this video is summarizing like over two decades of spiritual work. So I'm just gonna give you the main points that I think have helped me the most and hopefully they will help you. So as a lot of you know, tarot has been an underlying tool but also template of experiencing reality for me for like a long time, like most of my life. But it wasn't tarot alone that actually got me to where I was. I would actually say that tarot was only the bridge to the tools and the systems and the philosophies that brought me to where I am today. It opened up a lot of doors. You know, tarot's like Swiss cheese. There's just wormholes and wormholes within wormholes. But yeah, it got me into things like Kabbalah, Hermeticism, ceremonial magic, and then some more contemporary things too, like energy work and self-development and various things. So all of this was like marinating in the background, but I think what really like truly set off the adventure or rather closed the adventure was my mystical experiences. I talked about this in another video and I'm not gonna go into this because really even if I had a Shakespearean level of adequacy with language, I, I could not even describe it. But I, I will just say that what I, what I brought back from my mystical experience was the phrase or sentence, there is nothing that is not this. And I don't mean it to be ambiguous, that's just the best I can do to describe the unity that I experienced um, ever so briefly. And after those experiences, they enlivened my occult and esoteric studies like so much. It was almost like I started to get the joke. Whether that joke was like Aleister Crowley's crazy Kabbalistic rants and like, and his seemingly zen and or nihilistic um, flirtations with nothingness and everythingness or if it was just i don't know getting the getting the chuckle of the zen master or understanding the paradoxes and in, in uh, the, the the parmenides or whatever it was i just started to kind of get it because what i understood was that this what this experience was supra rational or super rational or i don't know meta rational it was outside the mind one cool thing about like being on the spiritual path is you get the book when you're ready for the book whatever that is or the teaching or the teacher and it was when i read the upanishads that my experiences were validated beyond any other text and look a lot of texts des describe the experience that i had but the upanishads specifically like something about them they're just so sophisticated and so subtle that I just, once I picked those up, it was like what every, every other book was trying to say, they told me directly and beautifully and 
yeah, it was just a whole nother level. But anyway, um, I had a, a, a resurgence of understanding in my spiritual practice and research. And at the same time, my Jedi master, Purim King, uh, was helping me and, and coaching me and using a very, very intense razor sharp healing method with me that that really accelerated my karma that's the best way i can describe it and really helped me like overcome a lot of my bullshit and just a fun little note here you've probably heard of the idea of perennial wisdom or the perennial philosophy uh, Ald aldous huxley has that book perennial philosophy and it's the idea that there is this core inner teaching this unbroken mystery teaching uh, that has lasted since the beginnings of humanity and it is the center of all religion all philosophy all all quests of truth or self-inquiry and um though that might not explicitly exist you know academics would say that it doesn't exist uh of course your, your renaissance cats would would say that it does uh i do believe that there are some seriously beautiful common denominators um, underlying all of the highest philosophies and uh, forms of mysticism and, and quests for truth and self-inquiry. And I would, I would go as far, as far as to say that the most common denominator underlying all of these things is not a doctrine or a teaching, but an experience. And I would say it's a non-dual experience. Because when I had my experience, the, the writings took on a whole nother life. And by writings, I mean things from, from Meister Eckhart to Eckhart Tolle. Though the perennial philosophy, it, it, it might not exist historically, the experience and the truth, the gnosis, that is so emphatically shared by the mystics. Like there is no conviction quite as zealous as the writings of these ardent and passionate mystics like trying to explain this ineffable thing and it's just, oh, it's just the best and the thing about this experience is it doesn't contradict any belief system or religion or whatever it's it's so subtle that it exists underlying all beliefs all doctrines all modes of thinking it's it's the most subtle thing and so i think this alone has probably helped me uh, overcome and cure my depression and anxiety more than anything else and so I'm going to share it to you and I bet it's not going to sound too new because it's not new because hey it's been around you know the truth is just the truth it is it is naked and invulnerable and the most capital S self-evident thing there is so let's talk about it so to summarize and really simplify this let's call it a modality, but it's not. The way I did it was I released my identification with my experiences. Now, remember, I've been doing this work for a long time and I've done a lot of processing on my own shit and my own trauma and all of that. And so I definitely think that's very important, but you reach a point where in the process, you start to recognize that you are not those experiences. If you really take some time to inquire within yourself and within your world and within your experience, you will recognize that, you know, you have experiences, let's say depression, let's say anxiety. Um, you have these things that can show up, whatever, whatever the issue is, yet they always show up in a space of awareness always the key here is to feel those feelings and ex and you know observe whatever you're going through um, but don't label it just observe the feeling and recognize that you are the space the consciousness through which this is being experienced you are not the experience you are not the thought you are not the fear you are not the depression anxiety the whatever as you begin to pull away from these things, you start to pull away from the causal world, the world of time where things have beginnings, where things have ends, where you're identified with your body, with your mind, etc. You start to pull away from anything that comes and goes, and you recognize that you are the space in which those things come and go. And when you are that space, you're untouchable. Right? Because there's the you watching this video and then there's the me making this video and we have all of our complexes, our body-mind complexes and our karmic dance on what we want and what we're trying to avoid and that's cool. But even under not lying that, there's just pure awareness that is experiencing all of those things. What I had realized was that I was not any experience, whether that be depression or otherwise, 
but I was the pure, naked, invulnerable, pervasive, eternal space that is pure awareness, which is untouched by anything. Thing, okay? This is why all mysticism has something to say about no thingness. It's not nothing. It's not like this nihilistic thing. It's like, no, no thing in the sense where this oh, consciousness, this awareness is undivided. It cannot be divided. It is the ultimate substratum through which all things arise from or in. My point in making this video is that I want you to know that if you're suffering with whatever, if it's depression, anxiety, or circumstances, or whatever, just know that there we live in a time where you can access perennial wisdom like that and you should. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. I'm actually going to be doing a new program called Mysticism for Misfits, where I teach a lot about this philosophy and we'll be reading a lot of text and I'll be doing a lot of the, um, the really intense healing technique that I mentioned in this video. I'll be doing a lot of that too. So if you're looking to accelerate your karma, get through some issues, move beyond limiting beliefs, and you want to study some really trippy stuff, uh, I recommend this program. It's going to be really fun. The community at Tower Mysticism Academy is amazing and I'm so, 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 so very excited. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next wormhole. Much love.